My name is Nicole Barostquin, and I am the Conservation Lab Technician at the Nasher Sculpture Center. In this video, I'll outline the steps to create a bronze cast using the lost wax method. Bronze is a metal alloy that is a combination of copper and tin. When properly treated, bronze is more durable than materials like plaster, clay, or wood. And bronze is more weather resistant than those other materials, which makes it ideal for outdoor sculpture. The first step in bronze casting is to build an original sculpture, which will serve as the basis for your cast. Artists can use traditional materials like wax, plaster, clay, or wood. In addition, found objects like those in Miro's Caress of a Bird can also be cast into bronze. The next step is to build a mold around your sculpture. For a more detailed explanation of mold making, Refer to Michael O'Keefe's demonstration of casting from a plaster waste mold. The next step is to cast a wax model of the original sculpture by melting modeling wax into the mold. Once the wax has dried, you can sprue the wax sculpture by welding a cup, wax fence, and gates onto the wax mold using a soldering iron. This cup will provide an opening where the liquid bronze can be poured. Gates create channels that the poured bronze passes through to reach the sculpture. The vents are smaller wax channels that fill in fine details and allow gas to escape during the pouring of the bronze. The next step is to build the ceramic mold around the wax model. Dip the entire wax sculpture, including the gates, vents, and cup into a ceramic slurry. A ceramic slurry is a thin mix of clay and water. It's important to build a thick coat around the wax sculpture between a fourth and an eighth of an inch. Usually this will take six to seven coats of ceramic slurry for a small sculpture and as many as 20 for a large one. The ceramic shell must be dry before each addition of more ceramic slurry. This process of building the ceramic shell is called investing. Fine stucco sand is added to the sculpture after the first few coats of slurry to strengthen the mold. This sand is aerated so that the sculpture can more easily slip through. During the addition of later coats, a coarser grain sand is added to increase the strength and stability of the mold. This process of adding sand is called flowering the mold. Usually this will take six to seven coats of ceramic slurry for a small sculpture and as many as 20 for a large one. After the mold is completely dried, you can carefully chip open the bottom of the cup with a hammer. Next comes the burnout process. Molds are loaded into a kiln with their cups facing down and then fired to about 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. This process of bronze casting is called the lost wax method because the wax sculpture is destroyed when the ceramic shell is fired. The heated wax drains out of the cup at the bottom of the mold. This kiln sends the liquid wax through a built-in spout so that it can be reused. After it is fired, on the inside of this shell is the impression of your sculpture in the negative. At this point, it may be necessary to repair the mold using heat-resistant mortar, like the kind that's used to repair fireplaces. It's important for the mold to be as strong as possible to prevent cracking when the bronze is poured into the mold. Next, it is necessary to steady the molds with their cups facing upwards and heat the bronze to about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. It is essential for anyone pouring bronze to wear proper safety gear, including leather jackets, aprons, and safety masks that completely cover the face and neck. Those watching the pour should be far enough away that the splashing molten metal cannot reach them. When the bronze has reached its ideal molten temperature, you can begin to pour it into the mold through their cup.
when the bronze has cooled, the ceramic mold will still be attached. You can clean it off using a hammer and chisel. It may be necessary to sandblast the sculpture to remove the mold from particularly deep parts of the sculpture and to chase or finish the surface with steel wool or wire brush. Sprues can be removed from the sculpture with a metal cutting saw or grinder. Finally, the sculpture is given a patina and a coat of wax. A patina is a chemical treatment that alters the surface of the sculpture and makes it more resistant to weathering.